In the heart of downtown Los Angeles lies a district with a gritty reputation, notorious for its history of human struggle, Skid Row. This 50-block area, once the last stop for transients during the Great Depression, has evolved into one of the most densely populated homeless areas in the United States. It's a stark juxtaposition to the glamour and glitz of Hollywood or the upscale posh of Beverly Hills that LA is often recognized for. In this video, we traverse the rough terrain of Skid Row, not to exploit the tragedy but to highlight it. Viewcation presents Tragic Facts About Skid Row, Los Angeles Defining the Borders – Skid Row's Physical Boundaries While Skid Row's borders are often the subject of debate, there is a generally accepted area that defines it. Bounded by a set of major streets in downtown LA, Skid Row spans roughly 50 city blocks. To the north, it's defined by 3rd Street, while to the south, it stretches down to 7th. Main Street forms the western boundary, with Alameda Street making the eastern edge. Inside these limits, you'll find a mix of residences, social service organizations, shelters, and temporary housing units, interspersed with the bustling tent encampments that have become synonymous with Skid Row. These boundaries encompass the epicenter of LA's homelessness crisis. It's important to remember, however, that homelessness isn't confined to Skid Row. It's a citywide and nationwide issue that spills beyond these borders. Origin of the name The moniker Skid Row traces its lineage back to the mid-19th century, during the expansion of the Western Railroads. Roads made of logs were used as an antidote to the muddy, unpaved streets aiding in the transportation of timber for railroad construction. Known as skid roads, these pathways led to the formation of communities of seasonal workers, immigrant laborers, and mostly single men seeking work. Over time, the term evolved from skid roads to skid rows, encapsulating the neighborhoods surrounding these pathways. Among these communities, Skid Row in Los Angeles stands as one of the most enduring and infamous. The Evolution of Skid Row Skid Row's birth as a recognized district can be traced back to the 1860s, but the Skid Row familiar to us today began to take shape between the mid-1960s and early 70s. Small hotels frequently marked the landscape around Skid Row from the beginning and served as waypoints for job seekers and departing soldiers during both World Wars and the Great Depression. This transient population, primarily composed of young men, led to the establishment of numerous bars, adult bookstores, and theaters. The deteriorating living standards and the presence of low-rent hotels led to propositions to demolish Skid Row in the mid-20th century. But the influx of war veterans returning from Vietnam in the 70s sparked a move towards refurbishing single-occupancy hotels and social agencies to accommodate these ex-military individuals. The State of Homelessness in Skid Row As of 2020, the Greater Los Angeles Homeless Count by the LA Homeless Service Authority, commonly referred to as LAHSA, recorded 4,662 homeless individuals in Skid Row. This population is almost evenly split between sheltered and unsheltered persons. Despite this large number, the homeless population in Skid Row accounts for roughly 11% of the city's total homeless population, which stands at 41,290, according to LAHSA's count. Homelessness – The Broader Picture Los Angeles is home to 70% of LA County's homeless population. In 2022, the U.S. registered approximately 552,830 individuals experiencing homelessness, ranking fifth behind D.C., New York, Hawaii, and Oregon. California is among the top five areas with the highest homelessness. Although L.A. doesn't have the largest homeless population in the U.S., nearly half of the nation's unsheltered homeless population resides in the state. Boston, New York, and D.C. house the largest homeless populations. Safety and Perception of Skid Row Navigating Skid Row demands a certain level of street smarts. It's advised to keep a low profile, stay alert, and limit your stay. Daytime visits might entail encounters with individuals trying to sell you illicit substances. Nighttime visits are generally discouraged due to risks such as car break-ins and other security concerns. 
Driving through isn't problematic during daylight, but many people admit to running red lights at night due to feelings of discomfort. Life in Skid Row Skid Row's substantial homeless population contributes to a significant amount of substance abuse in the area. Mental health challenges are also prevalent, with many residents grappling with conditions such as severe psychosis, PTSD, or adjusting to life after an extended period of incarceration. Without adequate access to mental health services, counseling, or medication, the actions of Skid Row's residents often don't align with societal norms. Why does Skid Row persist? If an easy solution existed, it surely would have been implemented by now. Several charities and housing associations focused on Skid Row provide vital support systems. The removal of these systems wouldn't solve the problem of homelessness, but it might just relocate it. It's widely accepted among homeless charities that dispersing social services wouldn't necessarily alleviate or evenly distribute homelessness across the city. Even if these services disappeared, Skid Row's residents would likely remain. In 2021, a court came close to ordering that all of Skid Row's homeless be housed, alleging that structural racism had caused their situation. But a federal court of appeals dismissed the injunction, stating the judge lacked the authority to issue such a directive. This was seen as a near miss in holding the city accountable for the homelessness crisis in Skid Row. Support for the Homeless The government provides support at both the federal and state levels. Federal funding is allocated to specific communities, which then distribute the funds at the local level. In its 2021-2022 budget, California allocated $7.2 billion to 30 programs focused on homelessness. Despite significant government funding, many mistakenly believe that charities alone support the homeless as the impact of this funding is most visible through charitable efforts. Direct assistance is available in California through the Department of Public Social Services, offering homeless programs that guide homeless or at-risk individuals towards financial aid and accommodation, as well as through the California Department of Social Services. For Skid Row specifically, the LA County Homeless Initiative, funded through Measure H, passed in 2017, provides additional resources to address the emergency state of homelessness in the county. In our exploration of Skid Row, its origins, its struggles, and its resilience, we've peeled back the layers of history, dived into profound societal challenges, and glimpsed into the lives of thousands who call this area home. Yet we're often left with more questions than answers. After learning about Skid Row in LA, one might pause to reflect. How do these insights alter our understanding of homelessness and the societal structures that perpetuate it? Could there be innovative solutions we've overlooked that could transform the future of areas like Skid Row? Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have any thoughts on what might be the best path to solving homelessness? Let us know in the comments section below.